Welcome back to the presentation on concepts of classification of organisms uh, for the first semester the EPSC zoology program. And here we'll be dealing with the second uh, system and the model systems of classification, namely cladistics. Cladistics is otherwise referred as phylogenetic systematics or the cladistic taxonomy. It was developed by Willy Hennig in 1966. And uh, this classification is uh, based on the phylogenetic relationship among the organisms under study rather than on their uh, observable morphological similarities. Okay. And the classi during classification, uh, we search for similarity due to common phylogeny. That is, uh, if, this, if uh, two or more species or two or more taxa have evolved from the same ancestor, obviously they may have similar characters. So that is what is common phylogeny referred to. So we uh, look into or search for similarities and these similarities may be due to the common phylogeny or origin from the common ancestor. And during the search for these characters, there are two kinds of characters which we usually consider. They are ancestral characters or derived characters. Ancestral characters refer to the characters which are present in the entire group of a clad. I hope you remember what is a clad. Okay. So you can see here in this case. Uh, the ancestral characters, this is one of the ancestral characters, okay, of the whole group, this is actually a figure which shows the evolution of all the vertebrates, okay, and during the course of evolution, whatever characters have developed uh, at various uh, stages of evolution, it is marked in these red bars, okay, the character is also given along with that. So, you can see uh, limbs with digits, it is found in all these because they are all tetrapods, isn't it? So, it is a plesiomorphic character because it is shared by all these groups. Okay, that is what is referred to. So, it is a trait present in the entire group. Okay, now what is derived characters? Derived characters appear during evolution and cause formation of new subgroups. Okay, so here in this figure we can see these are the characters which have developed during the course of evolution. Okay, and the recent characters are what is referred as the uh, derived characters and they are otherwise known as the epomorphic characters. The primitive ones are referred as the plesiomorphic characters which we have already mentioned and discussed in one of the previous presentations. So, here limbs with digits, egg with amnion, all these are plesiomorphic characters. While uh, presence of mandibular fenestry, presence of feathers, presence of toothless beaks, these are epomorphic character for the class age. Okay. Among the epomorphic characters, some of the characters, okay, that is what we are going to read. Okay. Yeah. Some of the characters, it may be far, it may be unique to a particular taxa. Okay. So, for example, toothless beaks and feathers, even though they are epomorphic, they are unique to age. So, these are known as odd epomorphic characters. Okay. While uh, the presence of mandibular fenestra, it is actually found, it was actually found in the uh, ancestor Archosoria. And from the Archosoria, two groups arose, isn't it? And it, these particular character, it is found in both these groups. Okay. So, this is an epomorphic character, but it is shared by uh, some of the taxa. Okay. So, this character, this particular character, it is known as a shared derived character. And these shared derived character is what is referred as the synapomorphic character. Clear? I hope it is okay. Now, coming back to the cladistics. So, organisms are, uh, I mean, the different characters, especially based upon their common ancestry, the characters are studied and based upon the, the characters that organisms are placed into certain groups, okay. This is known as a clad, okay. Archosoria is an ancestor, ancestral stock and from there, two taxa arose, one is Aves and the other is Trochodelia. These two taxa, uh, along with the uh, ancestor, it is what is referred as a clad, the clad, okay. And it, uh, since it is, these two groups have arose from the same ancestor, this forms a monophyletic group, okay. So, uh, what we do is, we study the characters which we have already mentioned like synapomorphic, uh, autopomorphic, plesiomorphic characters and based on that, we find the common ancestry and we place the organisms into certain taxonomic groups and they are known as a clad. Okay, and clad usually we can see that they have synapomorphic characters which we have already seen. Taxa with shared derived epomorphic character, which is what is referred as a synapomorphic character, okay, shared derived epomorphic character is the one 
is actually the synapomorphic character. So taxa with synapomorphic character have common descent. Okay. So we saw this is a synapomorphic character for class A's, right? And these two have the this particular character. So taxa having the synapomorphic character have arose from the common ancestor. Clear? Now, in, uh, with respect to cladistics, each evolutionary step produces a branch. Okay, it branches. This is an evolutionary step. That, that means this particular ancestor had given rise to, had pa uh, uh, passed through an evolutionary process and had given rise to a species or a taxa. Okay, so there is a branching. And all the members of a branch would possess the derived character. Okay, this here it will be easy for you to understand. Okay. So, if you are speaking about the infratemporal, the presence of infratemporal and supratemporal foci, so it is actually the uh, skull contains two op uh, openings, fenestra openings, okay, hole we can say, right. So, that is a unique character of diapsida, right. It, uh, when we study this particular character, we can see that all these possess these character, okay, the foci, the two, kind, two kinds of foci. But when we look back down here, it may not be present. Okay, so here you can see the diapsida possess this one. It had branched into two, a dichotomous branching. This is what is it? Branching into two. Okay, so there is a dichotomous branching at this particular point, and whatever taxa arose from uh, at the end of this branching obviously had this particular character. But before this particular branching point, no organism or no ancestor ha will be having this particular character. That is what is required here. Okay, all members of a branch would possess a derived character. It will be absent below the branch point. Okay, and this particular figure developed based upon the study of the phylogenetics. It is what is referred as a cladogram. Okay, so arranging organisms on that based on their shared, similar, or derived characters that differ from ancestral characters will produce a phylogenetic tree. So, what is phylogenetic tree? The branched graphical representation of the what you call phylogeny. That is how the species have evolved. Okay. So, this is what is referred as a phylogenetic tree or what is referred as a cladogram. Okay. Now, what are the main concepts of cladistics? New species is formed suddenly by dichotomous splitting of common ancestor. Okay. That is, you can see, we have already mentioned, isn't it? Wherever there is a branching, two species are there. Isn't it? Now, characters are either plesiomorphic or epomorphic. Different groups with shared epomorphic characters is due to their monophyletic origin. That is shared epomorphic means synapomorphic. So different groups with synapomorphic character, it is due to their monophyletic origin. Monophyletic origin means they have a common ancestor. Okay. Now how we take up the uh, development of cladogram. Okay. So here there is an example. We are studying the DNA sequence of uh, six species listed as species A, species B, C, D, M, E, and F. Okay. Now what we do is we just align them, okay, uh, and then what we do is we take two species at a time and study the sequence, okay, and we find the shared or common uh, what you call uh, basis, okay, right? I hope it is similarity of the basic. So we found that here out I suppose here we have twelve bases and out of these at three points they have they share. Okay, but nine differences are there between species A and species B. There are nine uh, points where the DNA sequence is differing. Okay, and likewise we study each combination A with C, A with D, A, E, A, F, likewise B, C, B, D, B, E, B, F, B, likewise. Okay, and we have made a table out of it. Okay, so we as we saw that A and B differ in at nine points. Likewise A with C, two points difference. Okay. So what happens is, whichever combination shows least difference, it means they are more close. Whichever combination shows the maximum difference, it means they are more far placed in the evolution. Okay, their their uh, what you call similarity is very very less. Isn't it? That is why they have so much of differences. Here we are listing only the differences. Okay. So what we do is we can see that there are two uh, combinations where which shows the least difference. That is one is A with C and another is B with E. So what does it indicate? A is so close with C while B is close with E. Okay. So we are going to start drawing the cladogram. Okay. So this picture we have started. A is close to C, B with E. Okay. Here 
the length of these lines doesn't matter okay it is not like phonetics here the, it doesn't matter how we just uh, draw this one in this way it shows a is close with c that is it okay uh, so we know that a is close with c and b is close with e now what happens this has formed a, a taxonomic group okay b e has come from a common ancestor a c from a common ancestor maybe okay now we now what we do is a and c has formed a group b and e has formed a group what is remaining d and f now what we do is how close d is with a c and b e similarly so we what we do is uh, we just find the closeness okay now we will just see a c with d okay what we do is a d closeness we will see c d closeness we will see okay so here we have four differences and here we have five differences so we will take an average and we find that a c with d has a difference of 4.5 okay similarly b e with d we will see b e with d b and d six differences e and d here you can see okay that's six difference right so six and six here common take an average it is six again okay a c with b e so what we do a with b okay and uh, yeah c with b it is nine isn't it then coming to e a with e nine and uh, C with E, 9. So, if all the 9s average, it will be 9. Okay. What about these ones? They are all 10 again. So, what does this indicate? That is, uh, D E is more close to A C because this is having the least uh, difference, shows the least difference. Okay, fine. While D with B E, it is a little more distantly related. So, what we have, what happens is, D E is closely with, related with A C. So, for AC, the D is closely related. So, we draw it like this. D is closely related with AC, not with B. Right? Next, what we do? We take BE. Okay. BE is having 9 differences with AC. BE is having 6 differences with D. BE is having 6 differences with, uh, 10 differences with F. So, BE is closely related with D, not with F or AC. So, that is represented in this way. Okay. Now, what about F? F has a 10 difference with AC, 10 difference with BE, 10 difference with D. That means F is distantly related, equidistant, isn't it? It is distantly related with any of these combinations. Okay. So, this is how it is. It is actually an outcast. It can't be included in any of this group. So, this is what is actually a cladogram. So, if we get a cladogram like this, this means a and C is closely related, B and E is closely related, okay. D is closely related to AC and uh, B E is closely, uh, is uh, uh, distantly related with this one. This is how it is, okay. So, this is how we analyze it. So, this is all about the clado cladistics and cladogram, right. So, we saw that uh, cladistics is phylogenetics. It is based upon the evolutionary study and those organisms or those taxa which had arose from the same ancestor, it forms a clad and it shares synapomorphic characters and they have they uh, have a evolutionary closeness. Okay, so that is about the uh, second system of classification, right?